Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is J.P. Bardet, and I am the Dean of the College of Engineering here at UT Arlington. One reason I accepted the offer to become Dean here at UT Arlington is that I was really impressed by the opportunities to do great things in this region. Our faculty, staff and students are engaged and committed to the idea that engineering is about people. And it is our hope that the ideas discussed by today's panelists will help us, guide us as we look to the future of the college and its contribution to industry in North Texas. Ultimately, our process will lead to a substantive plan that will allow us to do our part in helping the university achieve its goal of becoming the region's first tier one research institution. I want to thank our panelists for agreeing to participate and offer their expertise. Our moderator today is Wes Jerry. Wes is president and CEO of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce and a member of the college's strategic planning team. He's also CEO of the Center for Innovation, a nonprofit LLC established in 2002 by the city of Arlington and the University of Texas at Arlington to serve as a catalyst for technology-based economic development. And now, I'll let Wes begin the discussion. Wes. Thank you. Thank you. Dean, thank you very much, and I appreciate everyone who is here today. Because we want to understand both the challenges and the opportunities. If we don't understand the challenges, and if we don't understand the opportunities, then we don't know how to think about aligning the College of Engineering into the region in a way where the College of Engineering is seen as playing a key role in helping meet those challenges and take advantage of those opportunities. And what I'm going to attempt to do in the summation is to say to you, here are some resources that we've assembled, we jointly being the university and the chamber, that we think could help the College of Engineering. Because they're very interested in finding joint research partners because what's happening at the federal level the department of defense and the labs are losing revenue too as their budgets are cut and there's a real unique opportunity at this moment in time for universities and industry and federal labs to come together to cost share research and when you do that you're generally aligning your research with something you're skilled at at uta with something one of your industry partners is trying to achieve, with something the federal government, frankly, wants to buy. Because unlike what most people think of the federal lab system, all of that research is oriented to discover something the federal agency needs and wants to purchase from someone. So suddenly your industry partner says, if I partner with UTA and we do joint research with a DOD lab, and there's a commercializable outcome. I can manufacture it, DOD will buy it, and I'm feeling a lot better about my partnership with UTA. And I'm even more inclined to continue enabling those bright professors to have the dollars needed to pull those graduate teams together for tuition and salaries to do the research to take us to the next level. And that's how you start pulling the pieces together. What specifically are we doing? You, at least some members of the college and faculty, were recently a part of a meeting in which we announced the formation of an unmanned aircraft systems consortium. A number of key industry partners who have never been that active with UTA were there, Dean, were they not? And they suddenly want to become a part of this North Texas unmanned aircraft systems work because that's the next generation in the aircraft industry, in the aerospace industry. Look at what the Army is doing 
over in Afghanistan with what we call drones in the media. They're really unmanned aircraft systems. Right now they're doing final tests on a very small helicopter that will carry both a camera and a bomb. And in urban warfare in Afghanistan, the operator will fly the helicopter over that urban space looking through the camera lens until they see the five enemy troops hidden behind a wall and direct the helicopter to dive bomb into the midst of the troops and explode itself. That's going to be modern urban warfare. That's being tested today. Now think about the payloads on those systems. It's not so much the four-foot helicopter or the two-foot helicopter or the eight-foot drone that flies, although there will be plenty of opportunities to do experimental design, prototype development, and ultimately manufacture. It's all the payloads they'll carry. Sensors, cameras, optics, you name it. We've got the list. Why are we involved in this? Because the U.S. Department of Defense currently buys 70% of every unmanned aircraft made anywhere in the world. They spend $2 billion a year today. They're going to spend $40 billion a year in eight years. And you can't name a region in America that's risen up and cornered the market and become the known industry leader in the unmanned aircraft systems space. But you could be a leader in that space. Given the aerospace industry you just heard described with people like Lockheed Martin and Raytheon and American Eurocopter and Bell Helicopter and others already here. Biofuels. We're deeply engaged in that. Why? Because the U.S. Department of Defense, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and the U.S. Department of Energy ask us to be. Now, what happens when the dean or the president of the university says, would you engage in a project? Don't they normally help you find resources? Well, what happens when three U.S. agencies say to someone like us, would you help us look at biofuels? And we're well down the road, Rick Bellows involved with this project, in looking at how we build the entire supply chain from identifying woody biomass and oilseed biomass, non-food, and take it all the way through the technology processes to convert the biomass to sugar, the sugar to butanol, the butanol to jet fuel, at a price competitive with petroleum to start a new biofuels industry. The College of Engineering needs to be a leader in those and many other arenas. Now, what you heard today, I almost hate to say this, really only scratched the surface of the data we can provide. These organizations and others that we can bring to the table and will have a wealth of data. But we wanted to get the thinking moving down the road toward what does a strategic plan really do and say, and how does a college begin to think of itself as a true resource in this space? Because when you begin to demonstrate that the college is aligned with and able to help the region grow, the region in turn wants to help the college grow. And as you move from state-funded to state-supported to state-affiliated, and we have to find more and more dollars to help you grow, that's one of the ways we believe that we can do that. There's some other things we're doing. We've created an affiliate partner network for corporations to engage with this project. Little-known companies like BASF and Lockheed Martin have joined it. Well, maybe you have heard of those, right, Larry? And as Larry well knows, that's not just the missile defense plant in Grand Prairie, that's the corporate office of the CTO in Maryland. That's the level of interest being expressed by corporate America. And those are the types of corporations that we can engage on this campus with you as you begin to think broadly about your collective vision as the staff, faculty, professors, administrators, of the College of Engineering in Arlington, Tarrant County, North Texas. Fourth most populated region in America. Only Silicon Valley has more technological assets. And you're one of the biggest of 27 four-year colleges and universities. There was a region in California once known for orchards until in the early 1950s, a group of men and women established Stanford Research Institute. 
at regions now known for eight tier one universities and a significant number of high tech firms we call Silicon Valley. Assets are here. The ability to harness them in large part set in this room. We look forward to the journey with you. And I want to thank our panelists for beginning to raise some of these issues so that we can begin to help you connect some dots to think about how the College of Engineering can grow and become a model across America. Dean, thank you. I trust I've left you some chance for wrap up. I appreciate the opportunity just to be a part of the College of Engineering and I want to thank the members of the advisory board for being here today as well.